present to you, this very urgent message. Are we months, years away from understanding the that's next a, dimensions? That's a really great question. It turns out that there will be an accelerator. So an accelerator, particle accelerator, right. accelerates right. protons to enormously high energy. And there's going to be a new one that turns on, it turns on in 2007, but really will begin operation in 2008. It's called the Large Hadron Collider, yeah. the LHC. It's going to be at an accelerator facility called CERN near Geneva. The world's largest the atom smasher. It's a puzzle that's challenged scientists, scholars, and the and It was hailed as one of the most significant scientific experiments in history. Well, now the Large Hadron Collider is getting a new piece of kit. Scientists described it as an upgrade comparable from going from a Morris Minor car to a Formula One car. Physicists believe they have finally found the Higgs boson. The initial discovery of the so-called God particle was first announced last July. The Higgs boson, so far an elusive factor that in theory holds matter together. The collider near Geneva, Switzerland crashed two proton beams into each other at three times more force than ever before. And we are privileged, privileged to witness this, this event in it happening right before our eyes. We are, in some sense, recreating the process of creation itself. I mean, does it lead you to believe that, damn it, it's not even, it's, we're, 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 just, we're just a small part of something very big. Just a final thought, because you came up with a lovely line uh, talking to our producer saying, nature is tricky to understand. Every time you peel back a layer, the universe presents you with something else that you don't understand. That's absolutely true. The Large Hadron Collider was uh, designed to replicate conditions seen shortly after the Big Bang. It broke down, though, soon after it was switched on in 2008. But, but we'd also learned that nature is a real tease. Because, <laughs> The title because, of your next book, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> right, that uh, there seem to be all these hints that, that we can put it together into a beautiful package and understand things more deeply, maybe learn about the, the dark matter. The, I hope that the LHC will, will take us beyond. Professor Stephen Hawking say that uh, we might just be around the corner from having a theory of everything. In my experience, that hasn't been the case. Every time we reveal something that we didn't know before, suddenly there are more unanswered questions. And by the way, the next step beyond the Higgs boson is to find dark matter. We know that most of the universe is actually invisible. It keeps the Milky Way galaxy together, in fact. So there's quite a lot of evidence for dark matter. If you look at the way galaxies rotate, they, they don't really fit in a model of the evolution of the universe if there's no dark matter. What's remarkable is you can build a self-consistent model of how the universe has evolved with just one type of dark matter. Uh, human beings like to be more on the control side. Uh, is the quality of the LHCb experiment. Have you been there for the ceremony with uh, the cremation of care? Uh, frankly, that's, uh, that, uh, I don't think that's something I need to talk to you about. Really? That's right. Well, I'm Alex Jones, and I snuck in there in 2000. I'm the guy that blew it wide open and got the video. It's been on national TV. Well, I disrespect you for that. You do? I do. But it's a lot of big public officials going in there. You don't took, we deserve to know? You took an under, I don't know anything about you, and I don't know anything about your film. But if you go in there with an understanding, you violated that understanding by releasing that film, and I don't respect you for that. Really? You have public you, officials I'm sorry, you public. took an understanding when you went in there that you would not do that film. And you did, did you have an understanding when you went in there? No. Did you crash it? Yes. Yeah, and it has no trespassing signs there, too, does it? No, they put yes, them up sir. after. Oh, I'm I sorry. Just walked in. I'm sorry, sir. I've been there before. I know what, I know what the circumstances are, and I'm sorry you uh, violated the understandings. That was not that was not a gentlemanly thing to do. But what about the ritual? Is the ritual gentlemanly? <laughs> Sir, everything. Uh, you, I, I, don't, I don't owe you this comment. I know. You, 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 you have. You. This is what's called ambush journalism, and I disrespect you for that as well. So thank have you, you and goodbye. Been the ritual? Yeah. You know what's happened since San Francisco just gone. It's clear over its time, but it isn't. This is just not a random part of town. But the upper class in San Francisco is that way. A bohemian grove that I attend. One time at a time. The others have come there.
but it is the most f***ing goddamn thing you will ever, ever imagine in San Francisco crowd because it, it's just terrible. I mean, I can watch shady games with anybody in San Francisco. The upper echelons of society assume that their rituals are acceptable to the masses. Statements like these begin to trickle out. I guess to drink each other's blood might mislead people or like people are imagining us with like goblets and we're like Game of Thrones drinking each other's blood. It's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes. Only. <laughs> it was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. There are many preconceived notions about what defines Satanism. Some people will say that Satanists are just playing dress up. Some say they sacrifice children. And others believe they have magical powers. But the truth is much more simple. Most people will agree that Satanism is the antithesis of Christianity. So first we must define what Christianity is. In a sentence, Christianity is the impulse to express brotherly love towards our fellow man. Satanism does not have that impulse at all. In the most simple terms, Satanism can be described with the pop culture phrase, pimps and hoes. If these words upset you, good. We are talking about the nature of evil. And if it makes light of it, even better. These animals are nothing to fear. While the rich and powerful Satanists want you to believe they are witches and warlocks, they are nothing more than pimps and hoes. Cannibals, feeding off other people like predatory animals. Completely devoid of the impulse for brotherly love, Satanism is the base level animal tribalism, an animal hierarchy comprised of the pimps at the top, the hoes they control, and the tricks they both exploit. This is the law of the jungle which has existed for millennia, a survival of the fittest, dog-eat-dog -dog world where the nice guys always finish last. It is the patriarchy that the anti-Christians claim to oppose, which makes no sense, because we are only able to transcend this ruthlessness with the Christian impulse of brotherly love, where everyone is equally welcome. There is much talk about a battle being waged between good and evil, but this sort of simple black and white duality only exists in our mind. In reality, what's going on is a balancing act between our spirit and our body. While our spirit may be drawn to love and light, our body is an animal with innate animal instincts that cannot easily be suppressed. And like every other species of animal, the primary instincts are survival and reproduction. So as far as mammals go, the female is the ultimate prize in the game of life. A society built upon a Christian ethos of brotherly love is one that honors individual freedom and the way to satisfy our animal desires for survival with brotherly love is through marriage and raising a family with some degree of selflessness. And without the Christian ethos of brotherly love, the Satanist simply sees women as the most valued commodity to be bought and sold for one's own selfish desire, pimps and hoes. Whether it be in the poorest communities or at the top of the pyramid, Satanism is all about control, and the ones at the top have invested everything into their technocratic pop culture media machine which is their main method of pimping. And they see the brainwashed masses as their hoes, because according to the laws of the jungle, they own them. Which is why they resent the Christian ethos, because it is the only thing on earth that stands against them. But the real problem with Satanism is that it keeps an individual from knowing God and discovering their true path. Our free will allows us the choice to either transcend spiritually, which requires a personal relationship with God, or descend into the animal kingdom and forever remain a beast, which is what the pimps and hoes are ultimately selling. But we don't have to buy it. 
Satanic influence has always been with us, and it is nothing to fear. These Satanist pimps are not gods. They are merely animals playing mind tricks and spinning lies. Redemption is for everyone, and humanity has a choice. We can either submit to the beast system and live like animals, or we can follow the Christian impulse for brotherly love and stand up against evil so that our children will know freedom.